live show, you know. What else? How much there are No, but when there is, we'll sell you tickets. Len, how is it? Len, love. Are you with us, mate? Hey, yeah. Come on. Oh, look at the mess. It's blood all over the place. Well, I think we should send for a doctor. No, it's well, sit down. Right. Don't fuss. Just sit down. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, but no, no quack, sir. Well, what about your head, love? Oh, just get a plaster, will no, you? No, get him a glass of brandy. Why, do you think Quick, that's wise? A glass of brandy right away. Come on, love. Don't waste time. Come on, thank you oh, very much. Oh, we'll be all right. Now, get that down, will you? Oh, what a thing to happen, oh, though. Yeah. Oh. Hey, give us a lift to the gents. Now, do you think you should try and walk? Well, well, maybe be, ones. will you? Can I, can you make it? Well, don't give me any of funny looks, madam. Ooh, talk about hard face. You can't even say she's sorry. Well, of course I'm sorry. You don't think I'm glad he's hurt himself? Hurt himself? You pushed him. You're responsible for yeah, that, lot. an accident. He slipped off stool. He never slipped. I saw you. Pushed him. I saw you. Hey, hey, come on, Elsie. I mean, look at the size of her. How good sit she have pushed Len over? Look, I saw her. He was off balance. He wasn't expecting it. She went at him like a flaming you fury. You were sat halfway across the room. You couldn't see anything in this light. Now, stop slinging your accusations. No, if there's any problem, it's between me and Len. Look, All right, look, look, listen. Let's just see if we can get a coffee until he's fit to go. <laughs> I think he should be on telly. <laughs> Do you really? No. <laughs> oh, don't take any notes of him, Mavis. I think you're very good. Very good indeed. Oh, Rita laughs at me as well. Well, the fun of your songs, aren't they? Aren't we supposed to be laughing because I've been splitting myself? Yes, laugh the way you laugh. Yes, that's a compliment. She laughs differently. Sneering. Right. Rita. Tell you what, love, just to prove how good you are, give us another. Don't know anymore. Oh, I bet you do. You're just saying that. Well... I could just have another little drink to give me some more. Don't you care? Oh, I can't bet. Let's set up then. Do you know this is turning into a right old shindy? <laughs> I'll admit, for us to have a quiet after time drink, it's you I blame, Rally. Hey, sir, you don't know where Go to on, start. Let's get out there. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are then, presenting for the first time at very great expense the magical, mysterious, multi talented, many sided dumb. Um, Magnificent. Magical. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> mean, moody, and magnificent oh, babies. Score the right, right. right. oh. 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 Sorry, I'll have to think. <laughs> Why are we waiting? Oh. I've sunk. Now. <laughs> Shush. Out, Sally Shuttle, with the Lancashire. He gave a party last night. All the lads in the lads was there. Who thought you knew? She's gone to get to with Len Fairclough. She's never. She has. So that's who his mysterious companion was. Me, moody, magnificent. Well, I suppose in the gloom of the Gatsby with half a dozen pints inside him, she could just about manage to look passable. He must be hard up. He could have been harder up. He could have took you. You know something, love. Your mouth's too big for your brain. Little Polly Perkins went and tumbled down the <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Wonderful. Now, all right, stop fussing now, eh? Len, how, how's the cup feeling? Well, it stopped bleeding, love, but uh, I think I might have only lost a couple of gallons. <laughs> Joking, Matty. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I, I reckon that gas needs a couple of stitches at least. Stitches? What stitches? Oh, it's all right. I've got very good healing flesh. I don't need any embroidery. I'll go and organise the test. Yeah, good idea. Oh, you'll be right as rain after a good night's sleep, won't you, Len? Yeah, I will, yeah. Oh, look, Len, I think Ray's right. It's a job for a doctor. Oh, it's all right. Stop fussing, eh? Let me just sit here quiet until the taxi comes. Then we'll all go home, eh? But however far I travel... <laughs> I know I shan't stay. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, good. Lord, I'm penis to drink. I'm <laughs> <laughs> vodka and tonic. Vodka and nothing. I heard I'm vodka and nothing. I mean nothing except perhaps a cup of black coffee. Oh, you refuse to serve me 
and the landlady's absence. In Mrs. Walker's absence in Surrey, Jersey, better than I's in charge. Oh, I wish she drinks vodka and tonic, and she were here, you would serve her with the vodka and tonic. No, we won't. We're not serving nobody. Now, look, you're here as Bet's guest, oh, and the party's no. over. Come oh, on, sunshine. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I wouldn't say this is bigger than you are. Oh, Bet oh, is not. Come on, love, get your coat. Oh, no, I'm only thinking of her. She has to go to work in the morning. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm stopping in bed in the morning. <laughs> and I'll have enough of that cabin and a rotten rita bossing me about. Going to work in the factory. Well, the state you'll be in tomorrow, they'll not give you a job sweeping floors. I'll put kettle on. No, not for me, thanks, Bert. No, I'm going now. Thank you. It's been great fun. Yeah, Very great. Walk the if you like. All right, only if you promise to protect me from any dirty great thugs. <laughs> You'll be safer with dirty great thugs. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> when you're sober, we'll have a talk about factory. If you're serious, I won't mind coming with you. I won't mind a change. A bit more in my pay packet. Oh, wouldn't you just slag one more? Oh, one more No, not tonight, thank you. It's been, it's been lovely, but you know, another time. Cheer up, Bert. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean when I'm sober? I've never felt sober. Listen, <laughs> you're stopping here. Oh, I can't. And she wouldn't like it. Well, your auntie will like it even less when she sees the state you're in. So stop it now. Oh. Give me a phone number and I'll ring her up and make some oh. of you. Oh. Fred, she's stopping here. She's sleeping in Mrs. Walker's bed. She's stopping. We can't let her go home like this. And where's Miss Millas bus? She's missed the last bus. Miss Millas bus. Oh. Oh, excuse me. All right, love. I need the powder room. We should never have let her get like this. She's a big girl. Let her make her own mistakes. Bet you said you were stopping tonight. I only said I'd tuck you up in bed. And I only said that. I was lonely here of me. Well, you won't be lonely now, will you? Because you'll have Mavis with you in a manner of speaking. Oh, bet. Sorry. Three's a crowd. Blast bloody Mavis. Frederico. No hanky-panky. Can you see me doing? Frankly, no. <laughs> Oh, I do feel ill. I'll make him a nice cup of tea, plenty of sugar. Oh, just let me get to bed, eh? I'll be a lot better when you lot have buzzed off. Hey, what's up? I saw taxi going, all lights on and doors were opened. Has there been an accident, Lee? Summer and now, love, he'll live. What's happened? Oh, well, for a blow-by-blow -blow account, ask your mate Rita. Eh? Hey? Oh, I'll see. Well, it was her fault. What were? Look, will you stop nattering? My head's splitting anyway. Look, love, you get him upstairs. <laughs> Give us a shout when he's in bed and I'll bring him a hot drink. Up. There's some aspirin somewhere in that top left-hand Yeah, all right, I'll get Sorry. him. I'll get him. Will somebody put me out of my misery and tell me what happened? Well, Len took me out to the hey, Gatsby for injury. Well, like, how is he? Oh, well, would you believe it? She's found a conscience at last. Rita, a doctor or what? Rita, you'll tell me what happened. Len took me out for an enjoyable evening at the Gatsby. Madame here objected, so she thumped him, that's all. You liar. It were an accident. I never meant to hurt him. And anyway, that's... You do admit that you landed in one, though. All I admit is I lost my temper. But don't flatter yourself. It was on your account. I've better things to worry about. Oh, for sure. I'll take these. Thanks, sir. How is he? He's not so good. Oh. Sorry. Look, instead of you two bawling at each other like a pair of fishwives, hadn't you better sort out who's going to take care of him? Hey, what are you talking about? Well, if Ray says he's not so good, he's not so good. So somebody's going to have to keep an eye on him. Oh, well. Nothing sure. I shall have to write to Eric and Doreen Griffiths and ask them what you did do without me. Well, don't you like the idea of me having a mysterious past? I love it. I just don't believe it. Very chirpy for half past eight in the morning. Ah, but this isn't just any morning, you know. This is the morning I rejoin the ranks of the employed. At least it had better be. It will, Ernest. Remember, positive thinking. Positive. What time did Mr. Baldwin say he'd let you know? Well, he didn't actually. He just said he'd give me a decision today. 
Oh, I'll leave it till this afternoon. If I don't hear anything, I'll pop across the road. You'll not think you're pushing it? I want him to think I'm pushing it. He seems to be the type that admires a bit of get up and go, so I'll get up and go. Good luck, then. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, continental hours already? You are? Licensed premises, opening at breakfast time. Oh, no, I'm not going into work. Leastways, I am going into the Rovers, but not to work. Let's just say a little unfinished business from last night. Oh, did I miss some excitement last night? Well, one way or another, you could put it like that. you're doing? It's an ancient voodoo custom. It's called making tea. Oh, get back to bed and I'll bring that up. Look, haven't you got any work to go to? How are you feeling this morning? So-so. Well, how's the head? Still on me flipping shoulders. Oh, look, I'm sick of this messing about. Go on, get up to bed. I'll make some toast and a pot of tea and I'll bring it up to you. And after that, I'll phone the doctor. I said no. Did you hear what I said? Get back to bed. It's the best place for you in that condition. Go on. Flaming fellas. I come, you're starting early. Head of the dog. Well, you didn't have all that much to sup last night. Had enough. Unless you carried on boozing after we'd gone. Do you mind? I went straight to bed. Who's? Ha, funny ha. If you didn't trust me, well, you wouldn't have left me with, would you? It's very true, that. It's a shame. How is our secret soubrette today, any road? <laughs> By the time I had to go to Lavie, I'd say very poorly. I'm not surprised. Still, it happens to all of us. Mind you, it doesn't happen to me as often as I'd like it to these days. What? Getting sloshed? No, waking up and finding myself in a strange bed. Oh, the lady in question. How are you, love? Oh, dear. Bad, is it, love? Well, it's not good. Listen, did I have an awful lot to drink last night? I mean, the last day I remember, we're asking for a vodka and tonic. But that were after them six rum and black currants. Oh, I never... Take no notice, love. She's just being cruel. Listen, you didn't have a lot. Not in quantity. It's just that you're not used to it. Not like some I could mention. Oh, to get myself in a state, didn't I? Um, did I do anything, um, you know? Anything what? Embarrassing. Oh, not while I was there. Oh. No. It was after me and the rest have gone that you tried to batter Fred's door down. Oh, Leave her be a bit. Of course you didn't, love. Listen, I don't know why you're coming up footing around here first thing in the morning just to taunt her. I thought you'd come to help. Oh, that's all right. I don't need any help. Well, maybe just a cup of coffee and then I'll be Give off. Me one, you know, last night you weren't going in to work this morning. You were going to go and tell Rotten Rita what she could do with her rotten job. Well, that was last night. And you were going to go to the factory and see what they had in the way of work? I can't see myself working in a factory. I've been told what to do all the time. Well, aren't you told what to do all the time in cabin by bossy Rita? Yeah, but I'm not frightened of Rita. <laughs> I'd be glad all the same if you wouldn't tell her about last night. Well, I am entitled to my private life. If it's any consolation to you, love, mm. your life isn't half as colourful as hers. From what I hear, you don't go around nightclubs belting fellas now, do you? There. That should do the trick. I'll just give you a prescription for something for your headache. Apart from that, I'm all right, am I? Oh, yes. It's simply a case of mild concussion, that's all. I'd take a couple of days off work if I were you. Uh, can you manage that? Yeah, can. Yeah, if I have to. Do I have to stop in bed? No, yeah, only if you want to. Just till the dizziness passes. Otherwise, you can sit down here quite comfortably. What about my blood pressure? Normal. Apart from bashing the head, you're perfectly fit, Mr. Fairclough. Fit than you've a right to expect. Yeah, well, I eat too many chips and I drink too much ale. Not enough fresh air and exercise. I do get a bit of that at work. Oh, well, that's something. Now, listen, if the headache isn't better in a couple of days, just let me know, will you? Yes. Yeah, don't, don't get up. I'll see myself out. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Ta-da. Yes? Did you see Yes. Then? Oh... Len, oh. why, I'm sorry. I thought I'd pick on someone your own size next time. Oh, I didn't mean that to happen. I didn't mean you to fall. Oh, it's all right. I just lost my balance and I cracked my head on the way down. It would have happened to anyone that you thumped. I, I didn't really mean to hit you. Oh, I don't know. 
I just got a bit. Red-headed. Yeah. Landed out. Hey, what did he say? Is it serious? What have you do? He said I've got concussion and I'll probably die. Eh? Huh? At 93. I called him this morning, but Elsie had been in earlier and made him his breakfast. How did he aloof? Ropey. It was flipping bad tempered. Elsie had sent for a doctor. Oh, it's best thing. Yeah. Fred, it's OK if I out later and see if Thalen Invalid wants out. Well, because if I said no, you've been here longer than me, haven't you? That's true. He'll do all right with Aldrin. He's got the right ideas, even if he's a bit of a rough diamond. Yeah, it's no easy thing starting up a new business in these hard times. He's got that place going like a bum, hasn't he? No flies on him, as they say. Excuse me. All right. No justices they can. And you there with all your studying and degrees, and there's him rough as old boots, and it's him that's coining it. Well, Ray, I've long since come to the conclusion that I'm no businessman. I'm not a salesman. So what are you? No, I'll find out. I'll let you know. I know what I am, and that's thirsty. Come on, love, get your purse out, eh? Ah, Mr. Bishop. I was oh. told I might find you here. I'm not always in here, you know. Why not? Looks a nice little boozer to me. No, what I meant was... Well, I, I... Calm down. You don't have to prove to me you're a solid citizen. You did that yesterday. Oh, really? In what respect? Well, I think you're honest, reliable. In fact, just the sort of bloke I'm looking for. I've got the job. You got the job. Now, what would you like? Don't worry, I won't hold it against you. Oh, half a bit, please. Right. Could I have uh, half a bit and a pint, please? Huh? By the way, who was it told you I might be in here? Oh, uh, Mrs. Ogden. She saw me knocking at your door. She seemed interested. She would be. Yeah. And you, me, the factory, you name about it? She asked about it. That's our hill. You know, it might be an idea to have someone like you on the staff. Hmm? Can you think of a better way of keeping your finger on the pulse? Believe you me. Washington have had a few Mrs. Ogdens. Watergate would never have happened. I think you've got something there, Mr. Baldwin. Mike. Come and have that beer. Right. How much is that, now? Hello? Service Shepherds. Elsie Howard. Well, hello. And what can I do for you? What's up with it? Well, nothing. It's just that when I got home, I started thinking that, well, perhaps I should have had the green one instead. You had a green one on the rail. Yeah, behind you. You want to swap it for the green one? Well, I think so, yes, if that's all right. That's not being worn. Perhaps I'd better try this one on. It's the same as the black one. If the black one fit you, that will. Oh, but, I mean, I must get the effect. Mind you, with the black one, I could wear me pink blouse. I couldn't wear it with this. I mean, pink and green don't go together, do they? Of course, black is better for slimming. But, well, I think green would make a nice change. I've never had green. Well, madam, you can take that miserable look off your chops and replace it with a dirty big grin. Why? Well, first the bad news. You'll have to cook by yourself this lunchtime because I've got one or two things to do. <laughs> and the good news? I presume from your smirk there is some. Who gave you so much lip? You did. Oh, I shall have to smack your legs for you, I will. Do you know who that was on the phone? Your ex's wife. Mrs Thornton? Hmm. It would seem that uh, your Roy, or is it her Roy, or is it uh, Mrs Thornley's Roy? Anyway, wandering boy Roy has moved in with Sylvia. So Mrs T has got enough evidence for her divorce without citing you. So you have been dropped from the picture. I'm not a correspondent. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I told you I shouldn't tell me, Mum and Dad. Well, just once, it so happens oh, you were right. I jump over the moon. Still. Now what's wrong? I'm going to look a right fool in front of my friends, aren't I? Oh. I mean, what am I going to tell them? They think I'm being branded as a scarlet woman. Oh, you'll think up some wildly dramatic story with yourself in the leading role, as you always do. In the meantime, I've got other problems to cope with. Oh, after this, I could take anything in my stride. Including a new boss. Why, where are you going? Oh, I'm not going anywhere, you crate egg. It seems that Sylvia and Roy are thinking of selling off and going somewhere more congenial, you know, loving a warm climate. Go all. Timbuktu for all I care. I don't care where they go. It's who comes that worries me. Well, it's love. I'm so pleased. Mind you, I never doubted, not for a single second. Oh, I did. Oh, I do like Mr. Baldwin. You've never met him. I don't need to. He's obviously a man of taste and discernment. Employing my husband with all his talents. 
He's also very shrewd, employing your husband and all his talents for 45 quid a week. Oh, don't say that as if it was nothing. Well, it's hardly this. a fortune, is it? Well, it's better than supplementary benefit. You did say it was only a start. The prospects are excellent in the long term. In the short term, it is the end of two months' purgatory. Shall we treat your goddaughter in Melbourne to something a, a little more lavish than a boot token? No. Charity begins at home, and if I'm going to treat anybody, it'll be my wife. I'm taking you out for a meal tonight. Ernest, we mustn't let it go to our heads. We, we really can't afford to be reckless. Minestrone, spaghetti bolognese, Italian trifle. Oh, Ernest, that's the trouble with you. You know all my weaknesses. <laughs> if I'd have known that you'd already got a nurse... Well, there's plenty of room for you two, love. Give us another chocolate, darling, will you? Hey, where did you get them from? Cabin. Did you pay for them? Buy oh, fair cloth. Well, nothing. Only if you think that I'm going to spoon that into you, you've got another thing coming. Listen, I shall be going to the shops later on. Throughout the special, we want for your tea. For me tea? Mm. Right, now let's get up in Welcome coffee. Welcome to the staff lobby. Oh, as the doctor mean, uh, what did he say? He said I'll be all right as so long as I don't do out. Oh. Yeah, and if I don't obey his orders, hospital job. As bad as that? Yeah, but I'll be okay with you three looking after me, won't I, eh? Bangers and mash. Eh? Hey? Ginger here wants to know what I want for me tea. Bangers and mash followed by a custard tart. You'll find some uh, some money in the top drawer there. Right. A lovely drop of soup, this darling. Thank you very much indeed. Elsie, love, you mind putting the telly on? There might be a bit of sport on. Eh? Hey? Telly. Oh. oh. <laughs> Len, is there anything else I could do for you? Well, not really, love, but on the way back, can you just slip a couple of brown ales in your handbag? Are you sure a doctor said you could soak? He said I could do anything, love. As long as I don't exert myself. Mm. Oh, thanks, Elsa. Families can't live with them, can't live without them, as Mike discovers when he has an important decision to make. Next, on Granada Plus. at it. That's right. Well, I'm uh, just popping up. Well, you know where it is. Oh, yeah, love. Blindfold. <laughs> you! Len! I'm on my way up. <laughs> you didn't tell me you had a gorilla for a brother. I never asked. <laughs> Give up. That'll be the day. Oh, Terry, do pack it in. You heard your sister, Moody. <laughs> is that a squeal of defeat, I hear? It's a squeal of a broken arm. <laughs> right, best out of three. Right, Andy, this enough, time. Enough's enough, Terry. It's time you were off. Oh, Rini, I've had no pudding. You're not getting any. It's time you were back at work. Look, if Furcluff can malinger, so can yours truly. Who says he's malingering? His doctor let it slip to Ray. Signed him off two days since. So until he comes back to work, me and Ray's on unofficial strike. Well, will you stage your strike somewhere else, oh, please? Oh, come on, Rini, I'm still hungry. Uh oh, I should have said. See you later then, Harry. Yeah, not if I see you first, you won't. I never could take a hint, that one. Well... Still, I'm glad you hit yourself. I was hoping you would. Well, what are you going to do today? Any thoughts? Depends. Any suggestions? Oh, yes. But I did promise I'd see an off-licence in Clarence Street. I can't cancel to you, like. No, you go. I'll be fine. I'll mind the shop, if you like. Would you? Just say the word. 
Leave that for a minute, eh? Well, they won't do themselves. They can wait. So what happened to the big welcome? I'm sorry, love, it's just... Well? It's not exactly how I planned it. Your first leave here, it was going to be something special, something to be remembered. But instead, it's turned out exactly like the last one, with you rushing off before you've even landed, and me rushing around like a scalded cat, looking like God knows what. I wanted to get my head, and I wanted to buy a new dress. Fat chance I've got now. Look, we've still got tonight. I mean, what you say, you, you put your glad rag on, and we'll go off out somewhere. I'll book a table anywhere you fancy. I don't shut the shop till nine. OK, then we'll eat here, just the two of us. If you can get rid of that brother of yours for an hour or two. You just watch me. <laughs> hey, uh, was that your own pastry or some of that uh, frozen stuff? My own, love. And my dab on with pastry. Short crust, long crust, you name it. You weren't complaining, were you? Oh, no, not so you dear. Mm. You know, I've not seen this side of him before. The martyred, dog-eared side. I'm not sure that I like it. Well, you put him up there. And I've been flaming suffering for it ever since. Look, seriously, if you do want some time off, I'll come and sit in for it, if you like. Say, uh, maybe, um, a night sitting, hmm? Thanks. But as you quite rightly said, it was me that put him there, so reaching for him, fetching for him, carrying for him is all part of me penance, and I couldn't possibly ask you to do that, now could I? <laughs> well, uh, I have done it before, you know. Which makes it my turn. <laughs> all right. I'll pop in and bring him some grapes later. I'll peel them for him, if I'm not too pushed. Hey, is it right that you gave up all that work in Torquay just to look after him? That's right. Now, how is that for devotion to duty? I find that very touching. <laughs> hey, get back into bed. Go on, in. I am. Rest, the doctor said. Out. I was just trying to straighten me back. I think I must have twisted my uh, neck when uh, I went uh, on the uh, floor uh, after uh, you'd hit me. Forbidden subject, remember? Hey, you couldn't give my neck a bit of a massage, could you, love? Turn over. Uh. Oh. Hey, you know, you know what I'd do it, darling? What? A pint of any walker's bitter. No. It would, you know. No. It gets to the parts that the other beers cannot reach. Rest, the doctor said, and rest you're going to have if it kills me. Uh, all right. All right, doesn't matter. I'll do without. It's all right. Come on, why don't you come right out and say it? What? You want me to go for a pint for you? Well... One half, that's your lot. Make it a pint. Downstairs, love it, on the mantelpiece, you'll find a pewter tankard. What about it? Get it to fill it up, will you, darling? I mean, if I'm only going to have one, I might as well have it in style. Anything else? Uh, yes, love. What? Don't slam the door on the way out. <laughs> yeah, there's lots into that. There's lots of things. Hello, Mr. Tuffler. Oh, oh so right. that's it, eh? And what's all the fuss about? A few shells of expensive booze. If you have any complaints, Mr. Tatlock, see the manager. OK, love. Right. Hello, oh, Mr. Oh, Anything you fancy? Wine. Well, who really drinks that lot round here? Well, you know what them ads say about wine. A meal without wine is like a day without sunshine. Too much stout if you've got one. Yeah, you know what they say about stout too, don't you? A day we out stout is a day we out gout. You're always like that. Oh, about 99% of the time. I'm Mr. Trial, are you? Uh, it's on the house. First off license, customer gets it free. Orders are the owner and you're her. Hey, oh, what about me? I want to hear first. We well, you know what they say. You can't make his mind up. Don't get free booze. There you are, lovely. Thank you very much. I still bought on a down tools myself. Look. If we go on strike, the job don't get done. And if the job don't get done, we don't get paid, right? So what do we do then? Let him get away with do it. Do we, hackers like? There's got to be another way. Got it. Bromide in his tea. That'll put his nose out of joint. Oh, do us a favour, will you? Any road, he's probably immune since he was in Navy. I think they used to give it us in the neck. What? 
bromide. Will you shut up about flaming bromide? I thought you said you wanted ideas. Ideas, yes. Idiotic suggestions, no. Yeah, well, I still think the direct approach is always best, Willie. Go round and have it out with him. There you are. The direct approach. Go round, hit him with half house for it. Oh, sorry. There's no sport in that, though, is there, Alf? Well, what do you want? Sport or to get him back to work? Both. Oh. You know, I quite fancy markets for myself. I think I'd be good at that. What is market then? Well, it's sort of um, cutting things out. Oh. Hey, you're never running all these classes at the centre, are you? Uh, some of them, maybe, if there is enough interest. Oh, I can't even pronounce half of them. Entomology. Entomology. Don't think that's quite your line somehow, Betty. It's a study of insects. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ken. You fix up an evening class to explain all about the evening classes and we'll take it from there. Yeah, I've got a feeling it's got to be something. How's the invalid? How come when anybody's laid up, it's never them that's doing all the work looking after them that gets asked after? Back to life, love. Well, here's another. He wants that filling. He must be feeling better. Well, a few more days of skivvying for him and I'll send up in bed. In hospital. <laughs> hey! I hope you're getting all them papers out on time. Yes, sweetie. And renewing all library books. Yes, sweetie. And banking takings like I've showed you at the end of the day. All done, mate. Well, there must be some of you forgetting. Yes, there is, actually. I forgot what it's like hearing your voice yammering on at me all day and every day. It might surprise you to know that I'm managing quite well in your absence, so if you're coming back to expecting to find the place crumbling, you're in for a disappointment. Maybe. There is something you forgot. Your handbag. I am looking, gentlemen, at the answer to our problem. Come with me a sec. How do? I thought you two were working on site. Oh, we're on strike. Well, we're thinking about it. You what? It's rather pleasant, actually. You should try it. In case you forgot, Langton, when you were laid up with your gammy arm, Perclough was out grafting. The least you can do is return the favour. You reckon? I do. And take blue eyes here with you. Hey, hang on a minute. You've oh, got it's all right, Jerry. It's all right. That's a very interesting comparison, that, Rita. Very interesting. Mm. The only difference is that my injury was genuine. Meaning what? Meaning that Len Perclough is swinging the lead, my love. He's conning us. The only thing wrong with him is an hefty dose of idleness. He's as fit as you are. Fitter. Says who? Only his doctor. He told me that Len Fairclough's been fit to work for two days. I don't believe you. Yeah, well, suit yourself. Only next time you're soothing his fevered brow, just ask him, will you? Look into his crafty eyes and ask him. And if you swallow what he says, you'll be an even bigger mug than you are now. How long took you so long? Do you know, I'm getting slow in my old age. Yeah. Better late than never, though, I suppose. Oh. That won't even touch the sides, that darling. It'll go down like liquid velvet. Reckon You are? Checking on the local opposition. I reckon she'll have been to half the off licenses between here and Stockport before she's finished. And left you all on your own, Neil? I've been doing some reconnoitering of my own. Her opposition's near her home, if you ask me. You're right. I do. I have a set of maids on board ship who give their eye teeth to be stood where I am now. So where are they? They couldn't get ashore, could they? It's weeks sometimes, you know, before we see a woman. Months even. Deprivation like that is unhealthy. I can imagine. It gets so you can't think of anything else. You get obsessed, haunted. Keep talking. When you're lying in your bunk at night, feeling the swell of the sea underneath you, your mind starts wandering. And it's always the same picture, you see. It's always the picture of a, a blonde in a bikini. Do you know it's music to my ears, is this? Because sometimes she's not in a bikini. Sometimes she's completely... Your kettle's boiling. We'll finish this another time. You can count on it. Do you know, there's something about sailors. Hands off, you. 
Six years hard labour, Irene, is put into that fella. Well, she better look sharpish, love, because you know what happens in the seventh? They start scratching, especially sailors. You could have given me flipping pneumonia, you could have done. Now, there's an idea. Oh, get out, there was no harm done. Oh, not to you, maybe. You were lying up here in clover while some folk were working their fingers at bone for you. Yeah, oh, you were enjoying it. I what? You were having a ball. Enjoyed it? Standing over your rotten stove, cooking greasy food and washing your smelly socks while you were up here laughing your head off all the time. A joke, that's all. A joke? Oh, I didn't realise that. A flipping joke, yes. A joke, like your head were a joke and your dizzy spells and your bad back which I had to rub. Do you know I could swing for you? That was ill, that was all. Do you know what you are, Fairclough? What? You're a louse. Now it's special, just an ordinary commoner garden louse. And one day somebody's going to step on you and when they do, I'll have a laugh. Me! Until then, keep out of my road, because this is the last time you make a mug of me. Not the first, but by God, it's going to be the last time. You, gentlemen! That's all I need. Hey, Elsie had nothing to do with it, you know. Well, I hope not, for her sake. I brought you some grapes. Oh, am I interrupting something? I should save your grapes and your sympathy. Eh? Because you and I have been made mugs off by our mutual friend here. There's nought wrong with him, and there hasn't been for several days. It's a well-known fact down at Rover. The only ones that don't know are you and me. Is this true? No, he's asking him. Can't um, open his mouth without lies coming out. I might have guessed it. Aye, <laughs> but you didn't, did you? You've had her and I running round in flaming circles. Had me running round in flaming circles. Well, you rotten dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, love. I know it's not funny, but when you think... Do you realise you lost her a job in Torquay all through you? Do you? I'd forgotten that. You never know. I might have saved you from a fate worse than death. I mean, it's a bit wild down there in Torquay, you know. I suppose you think that's funny. <laughs> well, let's see how funny you think that is. <gasps> hey, 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 watch it! Now, was that flipping necessary? What's the matter? Lost your sense of humour all of a sudden? That's all my clothes down there in the street. That's right. So you'd better go down and fetch them. And while you're down there, fetch somebody else up to wash for you, cook for you and clean for you. Because as of now... Oh, I've had it. Can't take a joke, can she? What time are you due back then? Midnight. We sail at five. Didn't you, uh, didn't you fancy stopping in the army, Terry? I didn't fancy Northern Ireland, did I? That's where I was headed if I'd stayed in. Joint army to see a bit at world, not get me head blown off round corner. There's always navy, or merchant navy. Oh, yeah, we really would love that. Would she mind? She'd be delighted, wouldn't she? Oh, she's never objected to me being... Has she ever said that in so many words? Well, some things don't need saying. Reen and me, we have an understanding. Mm, that's what you have, is it? It's my job, Terry. I mean, she understands that, so we have this civilised arrangement. I live my life, she lives hers, except when I'm home. Yeah. Will it be the same as that after you're married? That's a long way off. Like how long? Well, no, Eddie. Besides, I reckon that's our business, don't you? Maybe. Except when you get a leave cancel, they forget to write, to send one of your famous one-line postcards, and it's my business and all. Because I'm the one who's here with her. Like last Christmas when you decided to stop over in Hong Kong instead of coming to see her. Three days I didn't get a flipping word out of her. And that was Christmas and all. But she never mentioned it to me. Oh, me? Because I'm only her brother, aren't I? And you aren't here to mention it to. Well, you were lucky I didn't smash that tankard yeah. on his head. Oh, great. Well... Now, with this dunking before or after you lobbed his wife runs through the window? <laughs> before. <laughs> but the best is yet to come. Here we are. Remainder at the housekeeping. Hey. What are you having, girls? The usual? Doubles. But of course. Ooh. You don't approve, do you? Oh, did I say so? You think I'm being childish, petulant and vindictive in that order, right? Possibly. I suppose you'd have given him one of your doleful loops and done out. I wouldn't have got myself in that situation in the first place. But of course. But uh, if I had... Yeah. I'd have done exactly what you did. Right. Oh. What? <laughs> do you know, for that, I'd a good mind to say you can come in late tomorrow and I'll do papers. Oh, can I? No, but it would touch and go for a minute there. <laughs> Girls, to Len Furkler. Um. God bless his little cotton wife fronts. <laughs> <laughs> Who we'll let you in? Door was open. He didn't have bothered. I'd have been coming back to work tomorrow anyway. Is that a fact? Yeah, you don't think I'd let you two work on your Todd like that, do you? Crossed our minds, aren't I? 
It also crossed our minds, like about every ten minutes, to come round here and stick one on you. Is that right, Raymond? Yes, and if you ever pull a stunt like this again, I will do. And that's a promise. Come on, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> they were good times, great times. Oh, yes, the best. Another world. Hey, what happened to that Italian chap? You know, we were all went to the races with him one day. <laughs> he got married, that's what happened to him. Back to the Navy for a two-up, two-down and a bunch of kids. I've, uh, I've always been straight with you, haven't I, Rini? Really? I've always been on the level. What sort of a question's that? I wouldn't want to see you hurt, you know. Makes you think I'm going to get hurt. Well, people can hurt each other without knowing, without trying sometimes. What do you do with yourself when I'm gone? <laughs> Go to sleep, probably. <laughs> I'm all in. Uh, I mean, tomorrow, the day after, when I'm at sea. What do you do with your time? I mean, do you have a go out at all with other fellas? I thought we'd agreed not to ask any questions. Well, maybe it's time we did. So, what brought all this on? Oh, nothing. Harry, I can read you like a book. Uh, it was something your brother said. Terry? He asked me when we were getting married. So, what did you say? I didn't say anything. Because I didn't know the answer. Well, there's no hurry. I, I always said I'd wait until you were ready. I always said that. Nothing's changed. Well, that's not what you were saying this morning. I mean, you were saying how much you'd changed. Not about us, I haven't. Why did you get this place, Rini? I mean, was it, was it just for yourself? Or was it something for us? For when I come ashore and settle down? You settle down? Because if that is the reason... It isn't. Yeah, I mean, can, can you honestly picture it? I mean, me serving behind that counter. You don't have to serve behind the counter. You can do anything. Well, like what? I mean, pensioned off third officers are the stuff dole queues are made of, love. Besides, the seize me life, I'd, I'd be like a fish out of water in Civvy Street. You know what I said when Terry asked when we were getting married? Exactly what you said. There's no hurry. And then I got to thinking that that if we really wanted to get married, we'd have done it by now. I can't see it working really, can you? I can't see us getting married with me out of the Navy, and I can't see us getting married with me in it. I mean, I, either way, you'd be the loser, wouldn't you? I mean, me away for ten months every year, and you resenting it. I mean, you would, you know you would. It, it won't work, love. I, mean, I thought it would once, but... Well, that was a long time ago, in that other world. That's it, is it? The finish? Is that what you're saying, Harry? Well, I mean, not, not if you don't want. I mean, we still get along, all right? I've lots of laughs when I'm home, but... But if someone else comes along in the meantime, don't wait around. Not on my account. Or you might be in for a long wait. It's been six years already. That's terrible. Look, I've got to go. You'd be all right. Chin up. It's not worth it. Nothing is. Life's too short.
Next on Granada Plus, contestants pit their wits, minds and bodies against each other in another gruelling round of The Krypton Factor.